What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mark David Meyer, with the fire, here to share ideas and take our collective vibration up just a little bit higher today. So hailing our past lives, because every one of us has some footprints in the sand, some emotional memory as far as why, when, and where did we incarnate, okay? If this is your first time hearing about past lives, my bad for challenging your belief system and ideology, it's time to wake the fuck up, man. There is nothing new under the sun and a lot of us have been here many times before, okay? And you need to think about the principle of correspondence. It's only a minute in and we're talking about it. Shut this shit up, man. Let's get real. So as above, so below, so within, so without. You are literally a star and that's the same reason you go inside and see a star. We are more than just a physical body. If you don't know, now you know. This is your shell. This is the densest layer of your existence in this realm in reality, third dimension earth. So in addition, you have emotions, you have feelings, you have a mind, you have ideas, thoughts, thought forms, okay? On top of that, you have an astral body. Where do you go when you dream? Like, think about it. Where, where do you go? Who are you? No, I'm literally asking you, who are you? You might say you're Tommy or I'm Tammy or I'm Mark or I'm John. Who's saying John? Think about it. Who the fuck is saying I am? Who is the I am? That's the spirit. That's the essence. That's the soul. That's you. I'm going to just tell you since we're two minutes in, you're going to die, bro. Me too. I've died many times. I will surely die again. And if I didn't, I'd be hella upset. Okay? Because death is just transformation. It's not the end. Not like the Christians will program you to believe. Like there's some final destination, heaven or hell, that you just go to for eternity once you expire out of your physical vessel. It makes no fucking sense, man. That's lostness. And some of those people are demons. You should stop fucking listening to them, man. I got an amplified ass Bible, but that's besides the fucking point, man. Let's just get on track, okay? You are here to have experiences and to learn, right? And there's more than meets the eye. You're more than just the flesh suit. You're more than just the human physical vehicle. At some point, you will die. And so will I. And that's super cool. But the question is, what the fuck is left after you're dead? Okay? At some point, your physical body will expire. It'll probably decompose too. And at some point on top of that, all the people that know your physical body will probably decompose and expire too. And at some point, it even pains me a little bit to say this, but even my book will decompose. Even my ideas will decompose somewhat. Intellectual property, because it exists in the mental plane, has a higher chance of expiring later. But at the same time, man, everything has to go through transformation. We need to understand everything, everything, thing will have an expiration date at some time in space. All matter, chains, shape, and forms. And there is a principle in science saying that energy can't be created nor destroyed and generally we're all in agreement with that okay we'll just leave it at that so what we really need to understand y'all is that in addition to having our physical shell there's an emotional counterpart there's a mental counterpart there's a spiritual counterpart and above all we're having a hard time talking about this through the mental body but there is a divinity there's spirit there's a soul an oversoul there's a connection to all at some level of reality everything is one okay but when you're in a limited ass dualistic level of reality how the fuck are we gonna get up there because we can't even stop arguing over semantics man some of us need to wake the fuck up man my pluto is turning on so i'm getting a little mad but here's what we came here to talk about evolving the higher self that's it. That's not really what I said, what I've said at the beginning, but that's what this is about. Evolving your higher self, evolving your soul. You will change shape and forms many times through your experiences in this realm. However, the soul is eternal. The soul does not die. The soul will also change shapes and forms. And to be honest, man, this is a whole different video, man. But speaking of why I had to talk about Christianity, soul possession is real. And some of us willfully give our solar plexus ego individuality energy to other people because we're too scared or afraid to use it or we've been talked out of it that's some bullshit and my pluto and sag is gonna kill that demon who did that shit you better fucking believe it man i put that on my soul so look y'all who after your physical body has been removed you need to understand that generally your spirit is still traveling okay 
So as your physical body goes, it's dead. So at the same point, your mental body is going to die as well. You're going to have to get whole new shapes and forms for your next level of existence or next experience in whatever reality. So the thing is, man, this all comes back to the moon, the lightest shape and form that you build for yourself as a spirit. So generally speaking, when you transform as a spirit, all that is left is the emotional memory. All you carry is emotions and feelings. These are your directions. I say this so many times in consultations, but if you want to really understand how you're traveling as a spirit, you got to put the blinders on for a second and pretend like you're a bat or a, what other animal uses echolocation, like a, like a deep aquatic animal with low vision. All you're going to be directed by is frequencies and vibrations and resonance. Certain energies have a certain wavelength. You have a certain wavelength. So there's going to be resonance between the two. It's either going to be harmonious or disharmonious. You're going to like it or not. So this is the same concept as far as why we can experience deja vu in this life. You come into a body, you haven't met such and such Sally, Joe, or Bob, but you look at them and you're like, damn, you're just familiar as fuck. I feel like I recognize you. I feel like I know you. Or you just go to France or some shit and you're like, man, I feel home. Why do I feel home here? You probably lived there. Your home was in fucking France. That's why the fuck your soul feels like it's home. You feel me? Same way, you may have things that you don't resonate with. Some things you just never want to go to Egypt. You never want to go over the ocean. You know, you never want to, just some people, you just don't know why the fuck you don't like them, man. Just some people, everybody loves this person, but you just fucking hate this person for some goddamn reason. You just can't put your words to it. You just don't understand. And you can't change it. You're just like, why the fuck? Some of these are your goddamn parents. Some of these are your best friends. Some of these are your lovers. Real fucking shit. Real fucking shit. Smash that like button. So the thing is, y'all, you need to pay attention to the energy to find your past lives. Past life regression is a tool which will pay you dividends if you learn how to use it. Because how the fuck do you know where you're going if you don't understand where you've been? You'll be lost forever, right? Oh, man. <laughs> My soul. Sighing a lot because, man, there's a lot of energy. And in the last couple of months, I got 100 years of karmic debt off my chest. So I'm just letting you know, man, I don't ever preach shit I don't do, okay? There's going to be certain affinities you have, certain people you like, certain things that you don't like. And this all goes back to the time and space that you come here. That's why I preach so strongly to get your natal chart. If you want indications of past lives in your chart, you check your 12th house. This is right before your ascendant, right before you ascended into the body. You're going to want to check your south node of the moon. If your horoscope is the snapshot of your incarnation, you'll be able to see the time that was passed in the south node and you'll be able to see the future trajectory with the north node. Also, Saturn is our boundary in the material world. So if you look at your 12th house, south node, Saturn, or your Chiron, or your Pluto, because again, Pluto is the evolutionary journey, showing you the connection to your moon, your soul, your emotions, your heart chakra, you will generally be able to understand why you are here and what you're experiencing, okay? Power and control dynamics, different struggles or things that you have to aggress over and take control of, okay? So when it comes to identifying past life issues, we have to work with them after we've identified them. I'd say your best bet is to study and know thyself through your astrology, understand the influences and energy of the world outside of you. If you guys want more videos, have questions, let me know. But on top of that, you need to pay attention to your body because as above, so below. The same way that you have physical ailments or maladies or pains, these are manifested from different realms of reality, okay? And you need to understand that as a soul, you're traveling through the astral in whatever dimension, right? Before you go pick another incarnation. So you set the moon, the emotional memory, the counterprint, the, the counterpart, the footprints in the sand, the memory, and you'll be able to build a new body based on the emotional blueprint that you received in past lives. So this is really important to understand as far as some of us having catastrophic lives or traumatic deaths or different experiences and unresolved issues in some of our lives. You want to think about for a soul, because catastrophe happens every day, y'all. People get in car accidents. Sometimes there's deranged, psychotic people who think it's their will to kill a shit ton of other people. Think about what it's like to die in the frequency and vibration of fear. What is it like to die in the state of shock? Do you truly have time as a soul in the body to process? No, you don't when your body is completely shut the fuck off so fast. And for some of us, this happens. You got to think about this, man. This literally happens in our world. So what is it like on an esoteric level for these people in their realm of existence? Because life doesn't have shit to do with existence. You need to think about that.
like, wake the fuck up, y'all. <sighs> so when you die in catastrophe or shock or loss or something like that, you're going to need to incarnate into a similar body to resolve these tensions and traumas and issues. Because you can't just go take like a fucking, I don't even have a word for it because I'm thinking of a different dimension, but you can't just take a different dimensional vehicle and hope to experience and resolve all the issues that you had in one of these bodies. It just doesn't make sense. So you got to go back to earth and get that shit right, right? So generally speaking, you got to heal. How do you heal? Feel. <laughs> That's how you do it. You ever stub your toe? That's my hand. You ever like run your foot in the wall and you're like, shit, that hurted. Your nervous system sends responses into your body that's pain, that shows you damage, it shows you injury. Wherever your attention goes, your energy flows. Don't ever forget that. So when you hurt your foot and you pay attention to it, or you hit your elbow and you touch it, you're directing conscious energy and attention to the wound for repair. Your body knows how to heal itself, and that's the beautiful thing. And this is truth. So when we talk about... Let me get some obstacle remover. When we talk about healing the physical body, the spirit knows how to heal all bodies as well. They know how to heal the mental body. Your spirit knows how to heal the astral body, the emotional body. But however, you're going to have to choose where you put your conscious awareness, okay? Man, this is actually a Saturn instance. So this shit is going to get real, man. And if you aren't ready to do the work, just get the fuck out of here, man. Sometimes you got to face the fucking shadows, man. You got to look at those footprints and figure out where the fuck they came from so you can address the circumstance and situation that you're experiencing right now and know that history does repeat itself until you get the message, right? So I'm willing to bet if you've been struggling with a physical problem, whether that's back pain or shoulder pain or neck pain or like lower back pain, root pain, leg pain, arm pain, any part of your body that hurts and you can't physically figure out why the fuck, it's probably something to do with your emotional memory and something that you've experienced as a soul prior to this incarnation. So it's imperative that we take care of our physical body with exercise, proper diet, sleep, you know, take care of your own needs. That's imperative. Because the thing about the principle of correspondence, y'all, is once you take care of your physical body, you will also send energy to the emotional body. The work you do on any plane affects the planes below, above and below. So as you work out and exercise, you end up feeling better about ourselves, right? When we start taking responsibility and sleeping more, eating better, handling our physical responsibilities, emotionally, that feels like we respect ourselves, right? It feels like we care about ourselves or that mentally we are aligned with what we say that we want, right? That's pretty fucking sweet. And if we're not, we can end up feeling the fear, not the fear, but the pain of regret. You can choose the pain of discipline, pain of regret. It's like two options, right? If you know a third option, let me know because I literally don't know another option. So the physical is a great way to help your spirit. And if you're not using physical solutions to help your spirit, you're probably just wasting your resources at the same time. But it goes deeper than that, y'all. Understanding that we carry the emotional memory. So this is really where we want to confront head on. The best way you can understand your emotions is to sit with them and be in solitude. Isolate yourself for a little bit. Just spend a little bit of time throughout your day alone. And then you'll be able to really feel your feelings. Get a damn journal. Write them shits down, man. Because you can think about them and feel them. But until you externalize them in the world and express or communicate it in some way, you might not be able to actually realize what you're feeling. Because you've connected to the cloud and then you let the cloud go. But you never pulled it into this reality. You feel what I'm saying? Write your thoughts down. Write your feelings down. Communicate your feelings. Some of y'all, especially the third house Chiron, the Chiron Gemini, some of y'all will not heal your trauma until you express that shit. If you felt that in your body, express that shit. If you're not confident enough or you don't have a safe place to tell anybody, that's why you write it in your journal. If you're like, I can't have a journal, write it in your damn phone, dude. You have a passcode in your phone, quit making excuses. Think about your feelings. Dive into these things. The best way, this is like key, 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 pay attention. The best way you can figure out what a past life trauma or response is, is going to be you in your own perception, seeing a disproportional response to a stimuli, AKA, I can just give you a goddamn example, man. It's like, I had, um, one of my partnerships, like I was in love with a person in this life and I'm not going to get too deep into this, man, because I'm working on this karma and shit, but you know, they'd express something with um, like their past or some other partner or maybe like even just talk about relationships in general. And I would start feeling insecure. I'd start feeling hurt. I'd start feeling like violated. 
even though it's not about me at all. And then I regress and I'm like, damn, I've actually been violated. I've actually been the victim of adultery. I've actually gone through that personally. And until I went through that, I'm like, I never understood why the fuck I was so sensitive about these things, you know? So that's deep from my 12th house. I'm going to share with you so you can kind of grab onto it because I don't want to just be giving y'all principles and no vision. Some of y'all need to see what I'm saying. A disproportionate response to a stimuli. Something happens and you get triggered, okay? Trigger is a synonym for inspire. So when you feel like fucked up in your body and something sets you off, you need to know your soul is trying to expand out that broken ass parameter. So you need to dive into the trigger and know that you're being set free if you really fucking look at the shadows. But if you don't, it's going to be escape, escape, escape. And then you're going to wonder why you keep manifesting the same circumstance, situation, or person in a different body. Real shit. So working on the emotions, not only do you need to be real and feel and express, you're going to need to move energy around. And again, physical exercise is a good way to do this. But again, energy work is really the best way to do this. So I recommend meditation for so many people, probably everybody. I don't know a single person that wouldn't benefit from it. But at the same time, when you use the M word, people say, oh, fuck, no, I don't want to do that. I've mentioned or I'm not even mentioned, but I've seen someone describe meditation as a light form of torture. So what you need to understand is meditation is sitting with your mind. It's sitting with yourself. If you feel that way about meditation, you need to understand avoiding meditation and living through your life is a more austere, mild and maybe even severe form of torture for yourself. So sit the fuck down and confront your damn shadows, man. Again, I'm not telling you all to do anything I'm not doing. The healing path is the path of least resistance. It doesn't feel that way because it's internal. You got to stop resisting against yourself so you can truly come to wholeness. If you're looking for anything outside of yourself, you're lost already, dude. If you're looking for anything outside of yourself, you're lost already, dude. If you're looking for something outside of yourself, you're lost already, dude. Not trying to be like a dick because sometimes my Leo Mercury, even I hear myself, I'm like, chill. But bro, my exalted moon is not lying to y'all for real. I'm just exhausted of this fucking pain, man. <sighs> heal, 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 heal. I'm going to slow the fuck down because it's Mercury retro. But directing energy, that's why you meditate. Not only would it manifest as you avoiding yourself is why you don't want to meditate, but I just want you to understand there's a million benefits for it. I feel the need to sell you on meditation if you're not ready for it already, but you need to understand that when you sit down and give yourself time to connect with yourself, not only are you able to organize your feelings and emotions, this gives you time to again, direct energy into your body. So if you've had like a broken heart or a broken back, or maybe you were like killed in like a building collapse in your past life, you were physically injured, you know, and emotionally speaking, the etheric body is going to need repairs. So that being said, you're going to need to take time to pay attention to it, period. Like if you did go through some catastrophic moment in your life and then go into a new life with this unresolved, I'm telling you guys, no amount of time in planet fitness is going to fix that shit. You're going to have to confront it. You're going to have to dive into it and you may have to regress into it and actually walk through the experience of your past life to be able to see it, you know? So we're going to get into that in a second, but I'm telling you guys, even if you don't regress, energy work, energy work, energy work. If you can just sit your monkey ass down and just breathe into your heart, into your third eye, into your crown, wherever your attention goes, your energy flows. So as you breathe in, you pull in energy from the world outside of you. And as you breathe out, you can clear out these centers. There's more than seven bodily centers. Start by reading about the chakras if I'm just making no sense right now. Chakra, C-H-A-K-R-A. There's a million videos on it and I doubt you haven't heard about it before to be honest, but clear out the energy centers so your physical body can be healthy because it's only as healthy as the emotional and etheric counter counterprint, counterpart is the word I'm looking for. So regression is the next thing you're gonna wanna do. Before I say that, I'm gonna show you guys two of my favorite stones for healing past life trauma. That's the malachite. This one is good for healing any unresolved trauma. This is mostly copper. That's why this is green. Very toxic to ingest. Don't make a crystal elixir out of this. And if you got a rough piece, wash your hands. But this stone loves toxicity. So that's really why I explain how toxic it is. Because when you pull it, a lot of people don't like this stone, man. I'm being honest. People, so many people say they don't fuck with it because it makes them feel like shit, okay? Because when you hold it through your energy body, you may have some shit drawn out, some pain, some suffering, some trauma. 
generally speaking, healing might make you feel a little worse for you feel better because you got to feel it out and release. Okay. I remember when I was looking at a video about someone explaining Malachite, they said their first three days with it were like hell and traumatic and just crying and snot and throwing up and ah, just terrible. I've had this Malachite for like five months now, man, and it's not stopping, bro. It's been more than three days, man, but fuck. Really good to unearth things. But I do want to say on that note, this is one of those stones that you may need to give yourself some breaks from because you can't heal, <coughs> pardon me, lifetimes of trauma in just one sitting. As ambitious as some of y'all are, you can't, okay? Just letting you know. So you might have to stop this sometimes because it'll just be like more suffering than you're ready for. That's why some people aren't ready for it, okay? This is a golden healer quartz. This is quartz with iron. Iron is a Mars element. It's very good for busting things up, especially when you amplify it through the quartz. This is one of the best stones for healing the past. Oh man, this one also might unearth some stuff. These two in unison, that's the wombo combo. So check that shit out, man. Don't say Mark Denver did anything for you. So apart from that, man, past life regression. The best way to regress into your past life is to ask your spirit guides for help. Every one of us has spirit guides, ancestors, or allies in the other realms of existence. In the same way you have friends in this realm of reality, you should pay a little more attention to those people up there. Because think about how whenever you have a friend that hits you up on the phone and is like, hey, can you help me move my couch? And then you're like, I was going to go do that for sure. And then, you know, fast forward a week. Next time they hit you up, the very next time, they're like, hey man, what are you doing? And you know they're about to ask you for some shit. They know they're about to put an obligation and responsibility on you. Don't be that person to your spirit guides. That's a whole nother video in general, but make sure that you are um, holding up your responsibilities in these realms. Because if you're not, don't expect help for a past life regression when you haven't done any work, okay? Real shit. But if you have a decent relationship with your spirit guides and ancestors, ask them for your help. And if you're not ready, or ask them for their help, if you're not ready, nine times out of 10, your spirit guides aren't gonna do it anyway. They're gonna show you different things to confront before you go do that regression. They might be like, look, dude, before you go look into your past lives, you might gotta forgive your damn mom. You might need to work through some of this shit. You know, you might need to let go of some of this anger and resentment and um, get more responsibility in this life before you start trying to branch out and figure out what your issues are. You know? Somebody's spirit guide told me to say that for real <laughs> because they're like, dude, I'm not going to let your followers just start bugging me for no fucking reason. No, some of y'all need to do the actual human work. But um, on top of that, if your guides are ready to help you and you're ready to do it, they will help you. And you can just sit your ass down in meditation. I'm telling you guys, this is another reason you want to meditate because you can journey just by sitting in a chair. You can journey to other realms and realities by doing damn near nothing. When I say doing nothing, I mean nothing physical. You're sitting still, but you could be on Jupiter. You could be on Pluto. You could be anywhere in the universe right now. I could say I'm not lying to you guys, but I'm sure there's people in the comments that will verify that they do this too. You don't have to travel physically to go somewhere, right? So when you're ready to do a past life regression, you reach out to your ancestors and guides and you reach out to the higher self and you ask for help on your travel and you ask for guidance to the most meaningful past life that is corresponding to the issues, circumstance, or situation you're facing right now. And then don't be surprised when you're shown some shit that shows you exactly where you've been before and why you're doing the same thing now. So you can make a different outcome, man. If you knew better, you do better. So if you don't, you won't. You got to go get some new information, man. And sometimes if it's not new information you need, you got to rewind and get the wisdom and knowledge from your past experiences. I love y'all. Have a beautiful day. Leave me some comments what you guys want to see next, and I will be tapping in with y'all soon. I love you. Smash the like button, subscribe, share the video, etc. You guys know what to do.